coming up on Ag Week TV. We take our show on the road this week with coverage from the National Association of Farm Broadcasters Convention in Kansas City, Missouri. We'll talk with industry experts about autonomous technology. What do the recent elections mean for the ag industry? We'll find out. We'll visit a rural school that's giving hands-on agriculture experience to 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. Welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Emily Beal. We're on the road this week, coming to you from the National Association of Farm Broadcasting Convention in Kansas City, Missouri. This is the 79th year that farm broadcasters and ag industry reps have gathered for the convention. The event features discussions about hot button topics and how they impact the ag industry, such as the election, technology, and labor shortages. Many experts predicted a red wave that would sweep the nation in the recent election, but it didn't happen on the scale anticipated. Jackie Fatka, Associate Director for AgriPulse Communication, says that could help the upcoming farm bill with bipartisan support. However, for many of the elected officials, this will be their first time working on the farm bill. And she says education will be needed. Their voices are trying to be heard, and so they were going to look for the farm bill if this is one of the few bills that could be uh, advanced, you know, as an opportunity to try to advance their agenda or those who are who voted them in. And sometimes that's problematic or worrisome for those in agriculture because it does not align with where things have maybe best benefit the farm level. According to FATCA, at least 150 House members have never participated in a previous farm bill. Former Minnesota Congressman Colin Peterson agrees that the closely split Congress in the wake of the midterm elections could bode well for a new farm bill in 2023. Uh, the Democrat is a former chair of the House Ag Committee and was instrumental in many farm bills during his 30 years in Congress. Peterson says the small margin between the parties in both the House and Senate could strengthen leaders who may want compromise on diverse issues like climate and nutrition programs. He thinks it could force farm bill advocates to listen to people in the other party to get them passed. We have this election. It's very close. You know, people are kind of divided. So let's work on what we can actually get done, what we can agree on, what we can come to a bipartisan agreement on. Peterson lives in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota, and is now an ag lobbyist. One of the big topics at this year's convention is technology. Joining me now to discuss autonomous technology is Ryan Jarden, marketing manager of John Deere. So Ryan, where is autonomous technology going in the ag industry? Yeah, so one of the big challenges that we hear from a lot of growers is the availability of skilled labor in order to execute a job when the job's ready. One of the challenges that we've set out to face, or that we've set out to conquer, is is that availability of skilled labor. And so one of the ways that we can do that is by taking an operator out of the cab, our machines can run autonomously, which is then allows that customer to essentially double their time. For instance, they may be combining in one field while their tillage job is being executed in the field adjacent to them. So as you're talking to these farmers and producers, a lot of them are skeptical about how safe autonomous technology is. What is John Deere doing to ensure everybody's safety? So safety is priority number one by far for us with, with this system. And so our system uses a series of cameras. This vision detection system or an anomaly detection system is using a series of cameras that gives a 360 degree view of that machine's surroundings and so it's always watching for anything that it doesn't recognize and if it doesn't recognize something it stops stops immediately and then it sends a notification to that farm manager uh, with a photo of what it saw and it says hey I stopped for this do you want me to keep going and steer around this or do you want to come out and move whatever this is so going into the future, in the next decade, what does autonomous technology look like for John Deere in the future? Yeah, so we, I mentioned we started with fall tillage uh, for a variety of reasons. And I'd say, you know, the next easiest things for us to do would be other jobs that the tractor does. Spring tillage, planting, grain carts, things like that would be the, the next easiest places for us to go from there. It's certainly going to be an interesting technology to follow. Ryan Jarden, John Deere. American Crystal Sugar Company is projecting what may be a record high initial payment estimate for its 2022 crop. Crystal projects an initial payment of $71 per ton. That compares to a $60 per ton initial projection for the 2021 crop, which ended up at $64.98 per ton. 
The co-op can adjust the projection in the following spring and fall. Crystal is a closed co-op with five beet processing plants in the Red River Valley and one in Montana. Crystal's 2022 crop turned out stronger than expected, averaging 26.5 tons per acre. The company started stockpile harvest five days late, which this year added tons and sugar content. A North Dakota feed mill will be back to manufacturing animal feed soon. The Dakota Land Feeds Mill in Glen Allen closed about six months ago, but now has new owners. Cattle, sheep, pigs, yeah. buffalo, chickens. Dakota Land had manufactured custom feed for a variety of livestock at one time, but sold commercial feed for the past few years before closing several months ago. The mill was sold to All Day Trucking of Jamestown, North Dakota, which was already hauling a lot of the ingredients for feed. Owner Ben Mickelson says it's a good fit with his trucking business, transporting ag byproducts. It fits really good for us because a lot of the ingredients that the mill will use, we're already handling, um, buying and selling, and uh, we're directly shipping to other feed mills as well as direct to ranches and feedlots. Ethan Camel, a former Dakota Land Feeds employee, is managing the mill. You see here we got like some barley screenings. They're partnering with Famo Feeds, an animal feed company in Freeport, Minnesota. In addition to pre-made feed, they'll formulate rations with right nutrients and minerals for each type of animal. Whether it be for cattle or for calves, whether you're feeding in a feedlot situation, or perhaps maybe you're feeding a group of heifers, we have something to choose from, which are designed to take care of all their needs. The mill can produce 25 to 30 tons of pelleted feed a day and plans to increase that amount. That is a pellet mill. Okay. That's the pelleter right there. The rations yeah, the, will the use a variety of commodity there. byproducts, including wheat mids, soy hull pellets, and dried distiller's grain to create high quality feed. We want to uphold a really good product um, as far as integrity of the, of the actual product we're making, but yet also make it cost effective for all of our customers. The mill will ship feed nationwide, but expects the bulk of their customers will be in a 100-mile radius of the Glen Allen plant. When Ag Week returns from the NAFB convention in Kansas City, we'll tell you about a school that's using a different approach to help students learn about ag careers. Farming the land carries a lot of responsibilities. You plan and forecast the acres. You plant the crops. You spray the crops. You pray over the crops for good weather and moisture. And you harvest the crops that are long awaited. Erickson Custom Operations would like to extend to you and your families a blessed and happy Thanksgiving. All right, here's the free gift I got for opening up a checking account. Let's see what I got. Okay guys, so I got this portable DVD player. Yeah, I'm not sure why my bank would give me a tiny waffle maker. So it's a tumbler, but it doesn't fit in any of my cup holders. I wasn't even sure they still made these. Is it for kids? Is this for kids? Don't fall for the free gift. Find a bank that cares about what you really need. Cornerstone Bank. Dynaflow is the ultimate high volume water management pump. Whether you're experiencing flooding, emptying sloughs, transferring ponds, or working on irrigation, the Dynaflow pump works in as little as 18 inches of water and is designed to move 3,000 gallons per minute. The Dynaflow lift pump is the perfect upgrade to your drain tile system. Using line shaft turbine pump technology, these pumps are made to last while operating efficiently. Dynaflow drain tile pumps can move up to 1,500 gallons per minute, up to 3,400 feet away. I'm Peter Bosch. I've been working with Gateway Building Systems for a little over 20 years now. I chose Gateway Building Systems to build my shop because I wanted a building that could both be used for my equipment and as a place for my family to hang out and do things. I would advise anybody that's thinking about working with Gateway to go in and talk to the guys there, tell them your plans and your future dreams and let them design something for you. For Ag Week, this is Mikkel Pates at Watertown, South Dakota. We'll look at the positive impacts the dairy can have on the community. A Minnesota couple has put a grain bin to a new use. Spoiler alert, it's not grain. This elaborate system of tubing with the downhill slope is how Maplewood State Park gathers sap to make syrup. Thanks for watching Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 
Welcome back to Ag Week from the National Association of Farm Broadcasting Convention in Kansas City, Missouri. Each year at this time of thankfulness, we take some time to look at the many ways people are thankful for agriculture. This year we begin with a unique program at the Northern Cass School in Hunter, North Dakota, teaching kids about the importance of ag in their lives. Katie Pinky has more in this week's Ag Week cover story. At Northern Cass Public School, they have a motto, Be Brave Before Perfect. They're taking that motto inside the classroom for a collaborative learning experience. You're all going to taste it and you don't, you don't know what it is. You pick what you're interested in, we'll help you run there. The middle school at Northern Cass School District has a unique studio system, short terms in which kids can choose subjects they're interested in, supplementing their regular classwork. You're switching it to the pasta plant? Yep. Sue McPherson is leading the Field to Fork studio. She wanted to teach kids about an important subject that's all around them, agriculture. And she wanted to help them develop an appreciation for it. What do you think it was? Sure. Sure. I am thankful for agriculture because it's the food we eat. You know, and it doesn't matter if your parents are bankers or doctors, everybody eats. Students are exploring careers in agriculture, including plant science, soil science, and beef and dairy. There's so many areas of agriculture, vast careers in agriculture. So they're each choosing a different career path, per se, or a different area in agriculture. Are you crystal sugar? Yeah. Yeah. And they're running with it. Representing six rural communities, the Northern Cass School is located between corn and soybean fields. I am so thankful for ag. It is what builds the foundation for this beautiful state and the amazing people. I, I believe that ag has what gives us humbleness and humility. Mackenzie Albert is one of the students who signed up to take part in the Field to Fork studio. Her dad works with beef cattle, so she knows the importance of agriculture. I'm thankful for agriculture because of the people that just work so hard to make our food and our community, it's just a blessing. Near Hunter, North Dakota, this is Katie Pinky for Ag Week. Every year at this time, school kids are reminded to be thankful for turkey growers with a virtual tour of a Minnesota turkey farm. The tours are sponsored by Minnesota Agriculture in the Classroom. This year's tour will be at Hunter Quistead's farm in Southwest Minnesota. He's a recent college graduate who comes from a long line of turkey growers. Now he's starting out on his own. He has two new state-of-the-art turkey barns. They cost $3 million and each one holds 40,000 birds. He keeps an eye on it with tech on his smartphone. So if something goes wrong on the farm, um, my phone starts texting me and calling me, telling me, hey, this is going on. You might want to come check it out. So then I got to come out here and see what's going on, see what the birds are up to, what mayhem they caused. The virtual tour is November 22nd. A tour of a reindeer farm near Mankato, Minnesota is planned before Christmas. People from across the ag and food supply chains got together at the Minnesota Ag and Food Summit to talk about what the future will look like. The event is sponsored by AgriGoth, which represents farmers, lenders, service providers, co-ops, ag businesses, and others involved in the ag and food chain. Tamara Nelson, the executive director of the Minnesota AgriGoth, says the annual event is a good chance for its members to get together to talk about what's impacting them the most. The idea is to get everyone in the chain to talk about issues together so that we're all working together for the best possible solutions and opportunities. This year those issues were the supply chain, animal diseases, global economics and the election results. The event also included two panels on emerging farmers in Minnesota and new ag products. Ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll tell you about some important things soybean growers need to watch for this winter. Farmers and Ag Dealers, join us for the NDAA Northern Ag Expo at the Fargo Dome, November 29th and 30th. Hear timely seminar speakers and enjoy a floor filled with crop production and service exhibits. The Northern Ag Expo, November 29th and 30th at the Fargo Dome. We'll see you there. There's no easy button. No guarantees or promises of a good year. This is farming. It's unpredictable and demanding with long days and sometimes stressful nights. It's weathering the storms and coming out successful. Farming isn't for everyone. We thank those who make it their life because it is 
for everyone. The team at North Star Egg is committed to quality and committed to you. We're not just a full service dealer, we're farmers too, so we know you need the best machinery and services that'll keep you going all season long. We have the largest equipment inventory in the upper Midwest with a well-equipped parts and service department. So whether you need machinery tomorrow or parts today, stop in and experience what North Star Egg can offer on our website at northstar-egg.com or give us a call at 701-361-4790. Every season has an end. After spending your whole life building something, it can be hard to move on to your next stage in life. But when that time comes, you deserve to have someone you trust guide you through the process. And by trusting us to pass on your legacy, it gives someone else the chance to create their own. Every auction has a story. Let us share yours. You can get the field results you want in varying conditions with the flexibility of the Summers VRT Renegade. Featuring on-the-fly blade angle adjustment from 0 to 19 degrees. And if you want the simplicity of a Super Coulter with the ability to move a little dirt, you'll love the all-new Summers Super Coulter Samurai. Go to SummersMFG.com or visit your local dealer to learn more about North America's broadest line of tillage equipment and other products from North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing. How will the second half of November's weather fare? Here's John with our Agri Weather Outlook. The first big winter storm into the northern plains brought some pretty cold weather, and that cold weather lingers. And the start of this two-week forecast will be a continuation of that very cold weather this, uh, this first weekend. Uh, however, it doesn't look like it's going to stay very cold very long. Uh, generally speaking, a little bit milder weather into the central part of the continent will take over for the middle part of this forecast period, which will likely bring some milder weather for about the Thanksgiving time of, uh, of uh, the forecast. At the end of things, uh, we're not really seeing any general trends either way. But we are going back to mostly dry weather. Now, let me explain that in just a minute. We had the one kind of big storm that was preceded by some littler storms. And then we've had a lot of little nuisance snows around the northern plains the last few weeks. There are some signs that we're going back to a drier pattern. Here's what we're looking at with the cold weather around this weekend. A little bit of ridging taking place along the west coast, which as we go through the week will be replaced by troughing. And as this low pressure area digs through, we're going to see some transitional weather and we'll actually get some milder weather into the northern plains. Doesn't look screaming warm. But there will be quite a few days that go uh, to near or above freezing from old parts of Saskatchewan down through the western Dakotas and through the central part of the Midwest. Things will moderate a bit. Frigid weather, as in near zero, sub-zero weather, continues to lurk up in the north central part of Canada. And the warm weather is beginning to look a little more wintry, kind of hugging the coastal areas uh, down south. Spine of the Rockies <laughs> this week will remain cold, but in general, the cold weather pattern will relax a little bit across the central part of the country. Now, going into the second week, still relatively cold, but we're seeing, again, this little bit of ridging taking shape. Now, I know you're looking at this jet stream so far down south. It's actually kind of a broad, diffuse jet stream pattern, so it's not a really concentrated jet, so it's not at the moment really pulling down any of that really cold air. And as we get toward the end of the second week, it's still mostly below freezing in the northern plains, northern Great Lakes, and kind of cool as in some 40s and maybe some 50s a little bit south of there. But we're not seeing any really dramatic temperature patterns. As far as precipitation goes, I do see one more round of a significant storm sometime near the Thanksgiving holiday over the eastern part of the country. And depending on this rain snow line, if it affects O'Hare, it's going to interfere with the holiday travel. Rain to the south, substantial, but very little of that is expected out into the northern plains. And in the west, there will be some northern California rain and some mountain snows. The second week, though, which gets us into the start of December, is really looking fairly dry across a large part of the whole middle of the United States. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has a storage solution for you with a wide variety of bin options and accessories, along with site planning and superior customer service. Plus, from top to bottom, we offer the industry's best 
bins, and warranties to protect your products and your grain storage investment. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with generations of experience and dependability. Make the superior choice today with superior grain equipment. Risk management is not just for the grains. Livestock producers, did you know you too can protect the price for your production? Livestock Risk Protection, or LRP for short, is a great tool to help you protect the price of your calves. Cattle producers can also protect their pasture and hayland from lack of rainfall with Pasture Rangeland Forage, or PRF insurance. This is a very affordable way to help producers in times of below average rainfall. Call the Risk Management Specialist, Martinson Ag Risk Management. the passion to make this season better than the last. Since the beginning, it's been our goal too. From our pipeline of groundbreaking traits to new technologies, ours is a story of innovation and a proven track record that's pushed performance and the industry farther than many thought was possible. But there's still work to be done and yields to chase. Because as you know all too well, success doesn't come to those who wait. Don't miss out on the equipment you'll need next season. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, has early order discounts on its full line of powerful, efficient, new Case IH equipment, including tractors, combines, and self-propelled sprayers. Get a great deal and ensure that you have the latest in productivity and technology. Supply chains are tight. Contact your Titan Machinery dealership today and find out how much you can save by ordering ahead. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH equipment experts. Dynaflow is the ultimate high volume water management pump. Whether you're experiencing flooding, emptying sloughs, transferring ponds, or working on irrigation, the Dynaflow pump works in as little as 18 inches of water and is designed to move 3,000 gallons per minute. The Dynaflow lift pump is the perfect upgrade to your drain tile system. Using line shaft turbine pump technology, these pumps are made to last while operating efficiently. Dynaflow drain tile pumps can move up to 1,500 gallons per minute, up to 3,400 feet away. Egg Week TV Soy Insight, brought to you by the North Dakota Soybean Council. A low moisture soybean harvest this year means growers may have to take extra precautions. I talked to an expert about what to look out for in this month's Soy Insight. I'm here with Ken Hellevang, NDSU Extension Agricultural Engineer. So Ken, how is the moisture looking in soybeans this season? Well, unfortunately our harvest was actually maybe too easy this year and we ended up with a lot of 8 9% moisture soybeans, which is lower than that market moisture of 13. And so actually across a large region of our country, we have guys that are wondering, is there a way that I can get that moisture content closer to 13? So is there a way to get that moisture content closer to that 13%? If we run aeration fans or drying fans under appropriate relative humidity conditions. 60, 65% would be the low end, and then up to 80, 85% kind of for the high range. For conditioning or reconditioning those soybeans, we probably need to wait until spring when temperatures outside are averaging 40 degrees or better so that the air has enough moisture in it to add that moisture to the soybeans. So is there anything producers should look out for as they're adding moisture back into their soybeans? As moisture is absorbed by the soybeans, those soybeans will expand. And as they expand, they tend to push against the bin wall and it can actually stress the, the connections and in some cases could even potentially lead to a bin failure. So what we recommend is that as we're going through that, that conditioning period, we should unload a, a load every once in a while, maybe two, three times as we condition the beans to try to relieve some of that pressure that, that might be damaging that grain bin. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Ken. Ken Hellevang, NDSU Extension. Still ahead on our show, potato growers make a generous donation to feed the hungry. Our environment affects us all. It guides how we use our land, what we grow, and where we call home. For decades, we've equipped our clients with comprehensive environmental solutions and confidence to build their projects. 
Our team of environmental specialists are experts in navigating complex regulatory environments and finding solutions to build a sustainable future for everyone. More engineering, improving lives by building strong communities. The team at North Star Egg is committed to quality and committed to you. We're not just a full service dealer, we're farmers too, so we know you need the best machinery and services that'll keep you going all season long. We have the largest equipment inventory in the upper Midwest with a well-equipped parts and service department. So whether you need machinery tomorrow or parts today, stop in and experience what North Star Egg can offer on our website at northstar-egg.com or give us a call at 701-361-4790. Don't miss out on the equipment you'll need next season. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, has early order discounts on its full line of powerful, efficient, new Case IH equipment, including tractors, combines, and self-propelled sprayers. Get a great deal and ensure that you have the latest in productivity and technology. Supply chains are tight. Contact your Titan Machinery dealership today and find out how much you can save by ordering ahead. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH equipment experts. Grain Handling Direct presents How to Purchase Grain Storage Solutions in Your Bathrobe First, go to GrainHandlingDirect.com, browse our products, check prices, and add your selection to a cart. You can place your order online or call our customer service reps with any questions. We'll route your order to the manufacturer and ship it directly to your front door. GrainHandlingDirect.com, direct and simple to save you money. Why I ultimately choose them is they handled everything from the site prep, the dirt work, the gravel, the electricians were all excellent and they're very knowledgeable in the dryer setups themselves. They made sure that they designed me a system that was expandable years into the future. It was a long-term encompassing project and that's what I appreciate about their knowledge. I'm Ethan Hansen from Blanchard, North Dakota and I would definitely recommend Advanced Grain for all your grain storage handling needs. The Northlands Rescue Mission in Grand Forks, North Dakota is thankful for potato growers. The mission serves more than 200 meals every day and that number is rising, but donations have been falling this year. That's what prompted the Northland Potato Growers Association to launch the Northland Potato Blessing Project. The mission is welcoming the donation of potatoes grown by local farmers. So we just, as an association, feel so blessed with all of our grower community that we wanted to do something to give back, and I know that our growers feel the same way. So we're just so thankful that we are able to provide these potatoes to Northland's Rescue Mission. So much to be thankful for. Over the year, farmers will donate about 4,000 pounds of potatoes and 6,500 bags of potato chips to the mission. Stories you'll only see on agweek.com and in Agweek magazine this week. A sugar beet industry leader was killed, and another faces felony charges after a single vehicle crash. And a Rochester, Minnesota co-op is looking for solutions that could pay farmers to donate excess produce in order to reduce food waste. Thanks for joining us from the NAFB convention in Kansas City. We'll have more from this event in the upcoming weeks. And remember to check Ag Week out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok for all your ag news. So long, everyone.